Well, thank you very much. Um, I just want to start out with saying how awesome it is that we're spending an entire evening talking about the subject of gratitude and giving back. Because I started my gratitude practice seven years ago. And as Hugh said, it had such a profound effect on my life that I went on to create the Gratitude Journal mobile app. And I'll get into that story in a little bit. But what I want to share with you is after, after I created that app and gratitude not only became the center focus of my life, but also my career, I really struggled with telling people what I did for a living. Because as soon as I mentioned the word gratitude, I could see the blood drain from their face. <laughs> as they like would quickly scan the crowd and try and figure out a polite way to get out of the conversation. So um, I tried to jazz it up a little bit and I said I was a gratitude coach. And um, that didn't work because people instantly thought I looked like that guy. And I was going to tell them to drop and give me five things that you're grateful for right now. And uh, so I changed it to I'm a gratitude pusher, thinking that, thinking that sounded a little bit cooler, hipper. And uh, that failed. Uh, and what I realized is that any word I choose, kind of, it didn't matter. Because as soon as I said gratitude, I look like this guy. <laughs> yeah, Stuart Smalley. So I'm a gratitude pusher. I try to get people addicted to gratitude and started with a gratitude habit. And the fact that we're talking about gratitude tonight tells me just how far the subject has come in just the last few years. In fact, we're in the midst of a mindful revolution where scientists and researchers are discovering that we can actually rewire our brain and rethink how we see our lives. So we can actually program ourselves to be happier. See, we're naturally wired to see the negative in situations. It's just a self-survival characteristic we've had ever since we've used rocks as tools. We're just scanning for the next threat. But what happens is we end up going in this downward spiral and we start playing these negative loops in our head over and over and over again, you know, the argument you had. And it doesn't even reflect reality because in our loop we have the good comeback, don't we? So um, scientists are discovering that we can change these loops and change our brain and which parts of our brains we use. And I'm not going to get into the whole neuroscience of that, but what I'm going to give you are just some non-technical, very easy life hacks on how you can start your own gratitude habit and unleash everything great in your life. But before I get into that, I want to admit that when I started my gratitude practice, I knew nothing about the science or anything about the power of gratitude. Um, it was 2006, and um, <laughs> that's me, scooping the snow. My husband and I had just moved here from London, and I am originally from these parts, so I knew what winter was about, but boy, that one kicked my butt. Um, not so much because it was so cold, but because my dad had passed away some several months before that. And his death was so sudden and so unexpected that it completely blindsided me. And I was on the lookout for the next bad thing. And damn it, this time I was going to be ready. But what it did was it sent me in a downward spiral. And ultimately, I ended up depressed. I gained a lot of weight. And I, um, my health was suffering. I had pneumonia for quite a time. I was drinking far too much. I had a drinking problem. And um, every other aspect of my life was out of control. So I had to do something. And starting a gratitude journal was by far the most important decision I have ever made in my life. So what surprised me the most was just how quickly my life turned around. It's, I, seriously, in just two months after keeping a gratitude journal, just writing down five things that were cool that day, my life had changed so much that I decided I got to tell the whole world about this. This is freaking amazing. It's unbelievable. So I said, how can I do it? Oh, well, I'll create a gratitude journal app. Let's never mind that I don't know a thing about creating apps. In fact, nobody did practically then. 
And let's never mind that I only have $500 budget and who cares if I don't have an iPhone? I don't need one. So um, who cares? I figured out a way to do it and I did it. And um, it's the best thing I did. So uh, seven years on, I have learned a lot about gratitude and more so about what makes us unhappy to begin with. See, it all starts out when we're younger and we're running around with our superhero capes on. And we have that feeling like we're invincible, like we have a superpower. You know, maybe you didn't have a superhero cape. Maybe it was a fairy princess costume. For me, I wore this little cowgirl outfit. And that, I was invincible. Um, but as we grow older, of course, we ditch the costumes, as well as this idea that we have a superpower. But the truth of it is, is that superpower never leaves you. It's still inside of you now. You still have a gift. You still have a creative genius. And that idea, innovation, could change the world. It could start a revolution. But the thing is, is that when we're younger and we show signs of going towards our dream or our calling or whatever you want to name it, it's often those people that are close to us that are threatened by it. It's a terrible thing to say, but they want to have us and keep us. So they discourage it, maybe just a little bit or they replace our dreams with their own dreams. And as a result, many people are suffering because they're chasing a dream that doesn't belong to them. And then they look and say, oh, I want to do what that person's doing because that looks pretty cool. And compounded by this vigilance of always looking for the worst thing is this feeling of never having enough, be it time or money or energy or sleep or whatever. I mean, we don't have enough hair on our heads, even. <laughs> <laughs> You're spending more on hair loss research than the malaria. You know, it's ridiculous. So um, here we are today. We have become the most obese, in debt, um, <laughs> uh, medicated, and addicted adults in US history. In our pursuit for perfection, we never find enough. Okay, so what I want you to do now is to, we're going to do a quick experiment. I want you to find a partner and I want you to stand up and look at that partner, but don't say anything to each other. Just stand there and look at each other. Yeah, we're only going to do it for 10 seconds. So if you could just stand up quickly. <laughs> All right, find your partner. If you can. Okay. Okay, now don't say anything to each other. All right, starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine and a half, <laughs> ten. Okay, <laughs> now you can sit down. And under your chair, you'll find a piece of paper and a pencil. And if you would just quickly write down one thing about that person that you liked, one compliment, OK? It can be anything. And you may not even know that person, but just the first thing that comes to your mind, you know? If you're feeling generous, two things. If uh, you really liked them, you really felt the connection, give them your phone number. <laughs> OK? So, and then give it to them, but don't open it. Not yet. Don't open it just yet. You can hand it over to them, but don't, don't open it. What I want to ask you first before you open it is what thoughts were running through your head as you were standing there? What, I mean, of course, what, what's her point? What's this is silly? What am I doing? You know, but were you thinking anything negative about yourself? And you know, if you were, it's OK, because it's natural. By the time we're adults, we don't need an institution or family or friends to stand in our way, because we do a good enough job self-sabotaging. <laughs> we, we create our own roadblocks. We stand on our own ways. And um, we have to be very careful about what we say because whatever goes through our head, we start to become those things. So when you start to say, I'm not good enough, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm not pretty enough, you become those things. So you become those words. So if you want to know where you're going to be in five years, just listen to what you're saying right now. Now, there is a Japanese scientist, his name is Dr. Marsuo Omoto, and I hope I got that right. Um, he is a best-selling author, and he did this groundbreaking research on 
the effects of water molecules and emotions on those water molecules. Yeah, you know it. You've heard of him. Some of you people have heard of him. Okay, so what he did was he took double distilled water to make sure that it was perfectly pure, and he would say beautiful words to this water, or he would show pretty pictures to it, or play beautiful music. And then he would study their crystallized molecular forms. And as you can see, they're quite studying. And then he took the same water, and he would bombard it with bad words and study their molecular form. And as you can see, yeah. So the, the water actually took on the form of the words. I mean, isn't that astonishing? So, you know, um, if you come to think about it, and this may be far-fetching for some of you, but we're over 60% water at birth, and we maintain a high consistency of water throughout our lifetime. And not only that, our planet is made of over 60% water. So we can't keep going around saying we're not pretty or we're not good enough or what. I mean, most women never say the words I'm beautiful because they only see their flaws and they measure themselves against some, era, you know, <laughs> some Vogue magazine that doesn't even reflect reality. It's ridiculous. And so, um, let's see what my next slide is. Oh. How does gratitude come into this? And how do you start your gratitude habit and stop this negative loop in your head? Well, first we have to think of gratitude as a muscle. And with any muscle, it makes sense to exercise it. And with any muscle, it will strengthen over time. So these gratitude hacks that I'm about to give you will get easier and easier. Next, you have to commit to doing these hacks for 21 days straight, okay? Every day for 21 days straight, because it takes three weeks for us to form a habit. So first we're gonna make the habit, and then the habit will make us, all right? So the first hack that I'm gonna give you is obviously every day write down five things which happened to you that made you happy. What caused them to make you happy? What, who was responsible for it and what events happened? And this can be anything. You bumped into somebody or somebody held the door open for you. I mean, seriously, yesterday I wrote about two squirrels that climbed up a tree. You know, that it was a pretty bad day, you know? <laughs> you put me in a tight spot. So, <laughs> but, you know, and if you can't think of three things, just uh, write three or five things, write three things, and then think of one thing that you improved on and one way that you helped another person. And if you only do one hack that I tell you, do this one. The next one, and this one's a little bit harder, but as soon as you wake up in the morning, say thank you. Have that be the first thought or words that come out of your mouth. And do it before you reach for your phone and check your messages or check email, because you want thank you to, be, to set the tone for your day, not the messages. Those messages could be wonderful, good news, or they could be bad news, but whatever, you said thank you first. And you know what, if I was getting up at 8.15, I'd be saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is my favorite. This is really a good one. Every day for 21 days, tell somebody thank you. I mean, if you do an audit of your people in your life, I'm sure you can think of one person right now who could benefit from hearing thank you from you. And, you know, when my dad passed away, I surely wish I would have told him thank you for being an awesome father. I never had that chance. And so, Every day for 21 days, find somebody, a family member, a friend, a coworker, somebody you just met, and send them an email or um, post something on their Facebook page or write them a letter, call them, better yet, visit them in person and say thank you. Mm. Then, you know, this area of the world, I love it so much because people are so super nice. It's fantastic, but be uber nice. Go out of your way to smile at everyone you can for 21 days. Let people cut in front of you in the traffic or in the supermarket. Stop with the trolley rage for 21 days, you know. Or, you know, if somebody's looking for a job, make an introduction. Um, got some spare change in your pocket? Give it to somebody. Pay it forward, you know. Random acts of kindness. Do it for 21 days and try and do one a day. And then, Every day, and do this a few times a day, just stop and close your eyes and let your other senses take over for a little bit. And then when you open your eyes, check your posture and make sure that you're sitting upright. 
and then do one of these. Hell yeah! <laughs> that really gives you some superpower. And bonus hack for you overachievers, <laughs> delete all the negative in your digital life. You know, people who complain on Facebook or Twitter, just stop following them. You can follow them again in 21 days, but you don't, you know, you probably won't want to. <laughs> and, you know, turn down the digital, um, the, the bad news, so you can turn up the volume in your own life. So what will it be like in 21 days when you finish? <laughs> it'll be like that, won't it? You know, it'll still be cold outside, but inside you would instantly and automatically concentrate on what you can do rather than what you can't do. And what I promise you is that every dimension of your life will begin to unfold without a doubt. And when it opens and expands, you will grow with it. Gratitude is absolutely critical for achieving your dreams. Mahatma Gandhi said, live as if you would die tomorrow, learn as if you would live forever. Now that man, of course, he had amazing superpowers. But each and every one of you have a superpower. You could change the world. But you know what? We come across hardships and roadblocks. And you know, let's face it, changing the world is no easy task. It's nothing small. But for the most part, the roadblocks that we come across are our own. We are our own worst enemy. We sabotage ourselves. So I have to look at my notes. So when we go out to do change the world, you have to see that nothing is happening to you. It's happening for you. So instead of looking at how far you have to go, look at how far you've come. And if I can do this, anybody can. So what I ask of you is this. Every opportunity that you have to say thank you, do it. This turns your fear into power. And the wrong people get out of the way and the right people get in your life. But if you only concentrate on what you don't have and what's lacking, you will never ever have enough. Even if your current situation isn't what you want it to be, if you can find peace in it, you will find your power. And when you realize that, and you are honestly grateful for everything, from the moment that you wake up and open your eyes to the moment that you go to sleep, you will unleash your superpowers, and the world will work in your favor. Thank you. <laughs>